biggest existential threats to our way of life. So you think you were targeted by people close to the government because of the work you were doing to expose corruption? Five Canadian diplomats and their families are suing their government for $21.2 million over the now infamous sonic attacks that affected foreign officials posted to Cuba. The suit claims the government knew the risk of illness from the mysterious attacks, but continued to place its diplomatic staff in harm's way, telling those who knew about the so-called Havana syndrome not to discuss it with anyone, even their doctors. France has recalled its ambassador to Italy after months of what the French Foreign Ministry has called repeated accusations and baseless attacks from Italian politicians. The two allies have been at odds over migration since Italy's populist government gained office last year. But the final straw was yesterday, when Italy's deputy prime minister held a meeting in France with the Yellow Vest protesters who opposed their president. The Food and Drug Administration says Walgreens sells more tobacco products illegally to minors than any other pharmacy, with nearly 1,800 violations spread across 22% of the Walgreens stores it inspected. As part of its crackdown on underage smoking, the FDA says it's seeking to block one specific store in Miami, a repeat offender, from selling any tobacco products for 30 days. Walgreens says it will now require anyone purchasing tobacco products to show ID, regardless of their age. TSA staff found a record number of firearms in the carry-on luggage of flight passengers last year. The agency says that of the 4,239 weapons found at 249 airports, 86% of them were loaded. When Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez revived the idea of a Green New Deal, there were a lot of questions about what exactly she and other members of the Democratic Party had in mind. And now, we have a much better idea. This morning, AOC and Senator Ed Markey released their signature Green New Deal in the form of a non-binding resolution. And that's important. That means that we are not going to transition to renewable energies without also transitioning frontline communities and coal communities into economic opportunity as well. This isn't a bill or a series of bills. It's basically a statement of intent that members of Congress can say they support without having to implement any of the policies it contains. Today, we are putting forward a set of principles, not prescriptions. But that doesn't mean it should be ignored. Because by proposing a resolution, Markey and AOC are starting a conversation that can't be dismissed by a single vote. And that's good, because it's radical. First, it takes an aggressive position on fighting climate change. If America did what the resolution proposes, going 100% renewable within the next 10 years, the US would probably end up being the only country in the world doing what scientists say we need to do reduce human-caused greenhouse gas emissions by 45% below 2010 levels in the next 11 years. And that's just the tip of the melting iceberg. Because the resolution does something unprecedented. It includes classic environmental justice and socialist economic policies, and positions them as solutions to help average Americans adapt to global warming. The resolution pushes things like universal health care, universal housing, and job guarantees, and argues that any policies designed to address climate change need to solve social problems too. Thank you all so much for being here, thank you. Basically, AOC and Markey are pitching the Green New Deal as a sort of crisis politics. In the face of an imminent threat, climate change, they're proposing a fundamental restructuring of society. It is three months, my friend, since I have talked with the people of this country about our national problems. It's no coincidence that the resolution is a reference to the original New Deal, the economic policies that helped the country recover from the Great Depression. Like its namesake, the Green New Deal would need a massive amount of financial and human resources. Individually, these policies are popular among progressives, but this is the first time they've been combined by legislators to make the argument that adopting them as a package is a fundamental part of helping American society become resilient to climate change. Parts of the Democratic establishment have been dismissive of the resolution. 
Before it was released, Nancy Pelosi told Politico, quote, the green dream or whatever they call it, nobody knows what it is, but they're for it, right? And today, she opted to downplay it. I, I haven't, I, quite frankly, I haven't seen it, uh, but I do know that it's enthusiastic and we welcome all the enthusiasms that are out there. But by proposing this as a resolution, the progressive wing of the Democratic Party gets an opportunity to position its ideas on climate change and economic inequality as the norm ahead of the 2020 election. On Saturday, tens of thousands of people marched in cities across Serbia for the ninth straight week. The anti-government demonstrations began in December after a group of men beat an opposition politician with metal bars. Protesters saw it as one of several recent attempts to silence critics of President Aleksandr Vucic. They say his ruling Progressive Party has neutered the judiciary and rigged elections to protect their own. The protest organizers include opposition party members, public figures, and students like Mia Drag Simovic. Aleksandr Vucic, this is symbol of manipulation, nepotism, corruption. Why are these protests important to you? To je način da ja na nek uspem da sa da se izborim za svoje pravo i za svoje dostojanstvo. Nama je obzeto pravo na slobodan život kao takav i ne samo da pričam. Na nasilje ne može da bude politički metod, a to je ovde počelo da postoje. On apsolutno vodi računa oko svega, neko računa u ustav. The beating of that opposition politician reminded Serbians of attacks under the government Vucic once worked for, that of autocrat Slobodan Milosevic. Milosevic was charged with war crimes and for supporting genocide during the Balkan Wars but he died before the trial ended. Vucic was Milosevic's information minister and fined journalists who criticized the leader. Vucic has distanced himself from his political past, and that combined with his nationalistic messaging seems to be enough. He won 55% of the vote in the 2017 presidential election. But according to Serbia's Independent Media Association, there have been more attacks on journalists since Vucic took power. I ovo je porodična kuća od dede, parandede i sve moje potomstvo živjelo je ovdje. Oh my God. Melania Vanovic is an investigative journalist. After reporting on a local Progressive Party official's alleged illegal use of public funds, he was attacked in December. Upravo sam ovdje na ovom ležaju spavao dok je supruga bila gore na spratu. Jer ovo je sve bilo Puno dima, supruga mi je pomogla da ustanem iz kreveta i jedva sam izašao napolj u dvorište. Ovo je treći put da su pokušali da me ubiju. The assailants threw Molotov cocktails at his house and fired gunshots inside. So you think you were targeted by people close to the government because of the work you were doing to expose corruption? Da, da, upravo to. Pa smatram da je za ovo Two weeks ago, Vučić announced that state prosecutors had arrested the politician for the attack. Partijska knjižica nikoga neće sačuvati od odgovornosti. Do you think there was greater pressure this time to find somebody responsible? Zahvaljujući medijima, tako da je gospodin Vučić bio pod ogromnom pritisku javnosti i morao je svoga čoveka da pusti niz vodu. Allies of the president point out that Vucic offered protesters a snap election and say the arrest is proof he doesn't tolerate violence against journalists. In December, a 70-year-old man had his house firebombed. Just to confirm, you believe that there is no problem with political violence in Serbia? Yes, there is, but we have sent a clear message because we have arrested a man. The man is arrested. It's very important to us that he is a member of the Serbian Party. Djokonovic, who's known Vucic for 24 years, also hosts a morning show on a government-friendly TV station. I've called them in my own show, I don't know how many times. They won't ever come. 
A suština je u sledećem, oni žele da glume žrtvu, da su kao gnjetavani, ne bili na taj način dobijali nekakav poje. Their demands are a change to the electoral system as well, because it favors the current governments. Free media and also an end to political violence. But you're saying that you're not willing to sit down and negotiate any of those points with them. Što se nas tiče, spremni smo da razgovaramo o svemu o čemu god hoće. Pojenta je o tome što oni ne znaju šta hoće. Ovi protesti su sve osim građanski protesti. Ovo su organizovani opozicijani protesti, opozicijnih partija, pokreta i tako dalje. Ali ja vidim da ovo je jedina opozicija na svetu koja ne želi da ide na izbore. Mislim, ja to zaista nikad nisam vidio nigde u nijednoj političkoj praksi, valjda opozicija. Milan je sada sada u svojim apartamentima. Ovo što vidite ovde na kauču, Ovo od garderobe, to je što posedemo, ja i moja supruga, to što je ostalo naše. Protesters will march again on Saturday. Despite the threats Milan has faced, he says he'll continue to support the movement. Do you really believe that the thousands of people who are protesting can actually affect change? Mogu, mogu. Samo ako građani budu uporni, a vidim da su uporni. What? Will it take for them to stop you doing your journalism? Ne, am namer da stajem. Pisat ću i dalje, radit ću i dalje, znači da se čuje istina. When Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi was brutally assassinated last October, there was near universal outrage and condemnation from everybody but Donald Trump. If we abandoned Saudi Arabia, it would be a terrible mistake. On November 16th, multiple news outlets reported that a CIA assessment found the Saudi crown prince Mohammed bin Salman ordered the killing. But just four days later, Trump put out a statement contradicting his own intelligence community, declaring, quote, we may never know all of the facts surrounding the murder of Mr. Jamal Khashoggi. Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill made bipartisan calls for Trump to take action. But while the administration sanctioned some low-level Saudi officials for the killing, they never targeted the crown prince personally or his regime. Senators tried to force Trump's hand by triggering the Magnitsky Act, a law created to allow the president to punish foreign individuals who have committed human rights abuses or extrajudicial killings. Nearly every member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee signed a letter requiring Trump to make a determination on who was involved in Khashoggi's killing and whether he plans to impose sanctions in response. And they specifically asked him to consider the role of, quote, the highest ranking officials in the government of Saudi Arabia. The administration was supposed to respond to the letter within 120 days. That deadline was today. Trump hasn't responded. And nobody on Capitol Hill expects him to. Senator Jeff Merkley is an Oregon Democrat and a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. There has been no indication that they're going to respond. It's difficult to get members of the administration to uh, testify on Capitol Hill or to respond to letters we send in general. This one more important than, than most uh, because it's, it's, it is a way of saying these folks who were involved did something horrendous and unacceptable and we will not be silent. So what options does the Senate have? We have other tools that we can bring to bear. Uh, we can cut off arms sales. One of the things that we pressed for was to, to end the administration refueling the Saudi airplanes en route to bombing Yemen. But I have a feeling we will see with the Defense Authorization Act another effort to have votes on, on military assistance and cooperation with Saudi Arabia or other forms of sanctions that we might pursue. One bill that might see some success? Legislation from Senate Foreign Relations Committee ranking member Bob Menendez that would, among other things, impose sanctions on the individuals responsible for Khashoggi's death. Merkley's on board with it, and it has bipartisan support. So Capitol Hill has the opportunity to take some action where Trump's avoided the issue. But Merkley himself says that Trump's inaction has already done a lot of damage. The United States has been a force for human rights in the world, and our voice in the world has been silenced under the Trump administration.
An Italian Senate committee met today to decide whether Interior Minister Matteo Salvini can stand trial for his decision to block a boat of migrants from docking in the port of Catania. He's been charged with kidnapping. Salvini says it was the government that made the decision, not him personally. But he made a name for himself running for prime minister on a hardline anti-immigrant platform. And he pushed for a bill known as the Salvini Decree that passed last year. It does away with the state's obligation to house most migrants. Dico, se hai diritto, rimani. Se scappi dalla guerra, rimani. Altrimenti cominciano le pratiche perché tu ritorni da dove si arriva. Salvini is starting the migrant housing purge by closing down some of Italy's largest reception centers, called CARA shelters, some of which offer language courses, work skills classes, and community projects on top of housing and food. At one of these, in the north of Rome, migrants only had a few days' notice before they were sent to different shelters across the country. Rosanna Yust is the legal advisor for the migrants at the shelter. It fell to her to convince them to get on the buses. Il clima all'interno del CARA in questo momento è molto molto triste perché ovviamente sono andati via la maggior parte degli ospiti che avevamo all'interno. In questo momento cerco fino alla fine di, di fare il mio lavoro. She's worried about sending migrants to bare bones shelters where they won't get the same care or amenities and where their housing is not guaranteed under the new decree which makes it easier to deny asylum claims outright. The first thing we've done is to remove from these transfers the people vulnerable, in order that they would continue to be protected. And then we've tried to reunite, I don't know, friends or maybe girls of the same nationality. Unfortunately, it was communicated since the first partition, because they were dismissed. Two in one center, three in another center, and five in another center. E questo vuol dire trattare le persone davvero peggio di peggio di, di, di bestie. The eviction from the Cara shelter pulls more than 500 residents and hundreds of thousands of euros in government funding out of a small town. The mayor didn't want to see it go and held a tense meeting to see if it would be possible to keep the migrants in town. Non è non è non è una realtà. Tre mobili quanto ci costano abbiamo detto per sei mesi. Allora sono più di 6.000 euro per quattro famiglie. Sì, devi continuare, fai i calcoli. Madonna. Che anche dal punto di vista economico è vero che il CARA tirava fondi diciamo governativi, ma erano fondi che poi erano rivolti alla comunità intera. Quindi sarà proprio la comunità stessa, quindi non solo i richiedenti asilo a, a stare uh, diciamo, uh, peggio di quello che ovviamente fino ad oggi erano stati. Tutti quanti vedi le fotografie di quando hanno fatto le attività, vedi i richiedenti asilo? Beh, è senz'altro una, una perdita per l'intera comunità, eh, perché mh, eh, non avremmo più la possibilità di, di incontrare eh, nuove persone, di mettere a confronto etnie diverse, usi, costumi, tradizioni. City Council members Luigi Galdiero and Francesca Sirotti say the shelter was never designed to be a permanent home. Poi lui quando fa lo slogan prima gli italiani e poi tutto il resto, naturalmente è un discorso un po' estremistico, però è la realtà ragazzi, è la realtà, perché non si può assolutamente accogliere tutto e tutti. Cioè diciamo a livello umano è normale che dispiace moltissimo, però comunque questa è una problematica molto che ha diciamo delle ramificazioni molto delicate. I fratelli che vediamo in giro sbagliano. A lui il troppo farà la testa. Ma per noi è un vuoto perché non sono grandi. Anthony Ahikwe is one of the migrants evicted from the car shelter. He can't return to Nigeria, and he's trying to assimilate. When the Mali come here for masses, they welcome me like a one big family, and uh, I, I was very happy and uh, started integrating. I'm seeking for asylum and protection. I, I left my country because of the risk of losing my life, so I can't go back definitely. Ahikwe has been ordered to go to another shelter outside of Rome. He's worried about the people who were once his neighbors. Probably most, most people remain on the street, and that will, that will result to them going to the hands of 
mafias that, that, that deal on drugs, to prostitution, to different, different, different things, which is inhuman. Salvini's decree means that thousands of other migrants at 13 other car centers in Italy are now in limbo, Don't. Don't. waiting to hear if they too will be evicted. Allora, Salvini parla anche di buon padre di famiglia. Un buon padre di famiglia che ha già queste persone all'interno dell'Italia, li gestisci, non li lasci in mezzo alla strada. Posso essere d'accordo e neanche sul fatto che decidi di non voler più ammettere tutti gli sbarchi. Ma se tu già hai delle persone all'interno del territorio italiano, non è questo il modo giusto di gestirli. Ah, sera. The world's giraffe population has shrunk nearly a half in the past few decades. But one of the poorest countries on earth is working wonders at bringing them back. On peut approcher. On peut approcher. So this is now the only place in West Africa where you find this species of giraffe. They're extinct throughout the rest of the continent. Niger is the only place you can find them. Donc c'est le mâle le grand. Ceux qui sont les moyens là, c'est les femelles. Ça, c'est le... C'est le mâle. Le mâle. Le mâle a trois cornes sur la tête, la femelle en a deux cornes. Huh. These are a unique subspecies, one of nine known as the West African giraffe. In the 1990s, there were just 50 inside this preserve. But now there are more than 600. Niger is one of the poorest countries in the world. But with the support of international NGOs, they've implemented strict laws to save the giraffe's habitat, imposing big fines and jail terms for poachers. That's created opportunity for guides like Adamu Jogo, who came back from the Ivory Coast to work here in the village where he was born. What's it meant to you to have this job? J'ai dit vraiment, moi, je vais prendre le bus pour venir au Niger. Voir si, si j'ai fait le texte, je peux être admis. Au moment où j'ai appris la nouvelle, qu'on a fait le texte, on a été admis. Je suis très fier. But saving the world's giraffes isn't necessarily good news for those who live next to them. As the population outgrows the preserve, giraffes are butting up against subsistence farmers and poaching their resources. Once a month, Jogo holds meetings with local villagers who are up in arms. But these suggestions won't work in the long term. So the Giraffe Conservation Foundation, with the permission of the government, has taken off some pressure by moving eight giraffes to another preserve in central Niger to establish a new herd. Jogo thinks it's the right strategy. It'll be good for the giraffes and will bring more development for the country in the long run. Directement, la personne lui va dire que les girafes sont en train de faire ceci, cela, ceci. Il pense directement au problème. Mais les avantages, il ne pense pas ça. Les avantages sont plus grands que... Oui, elles sont plus grandes que les, 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 les inconvénients. Pour nous, nous savons que la girafe, c'est un patrimoine national et même mondial. Oui, oui. 